It was just the most massive thing I've ever seen. I, to tell you the honest truth, I thought, well, we're the only ones left on this planet. Something's happened. We've missed something here. The fear that went in me when I seen it was just, um, like the feeling, I'd say it was fear, but I've never felt that feeling before in my entire life. It's a weird feeling, like you can't explain it when you don't know. You feel like you're being followed, but you don't know what it is. We had two to our right, another one in front of us, another one to the left, and another one just across the road, shaking the daylight out of the tree. All we get was a big red eye. I remember waking up and looking at the end of the bed and there was a figure there, almost insect-like, and then I blacked out. Welcome to the show, everyone. My name is Cade Moyer, and you are listening to the Believe Paranormal and UFO podcast. If you have had an encounter and would like to share it, please get in touch with me. My email address is believepod at gmail.com. If you enjoy the podcast, be sure to leave us a rating or review wherever you listen and head on over to our website, believepod.com, and consider becoming a member to get bonus episodes and video content. Tonight I'm joined by Adam, and Adam has been followed by some rather unusual hauntings over at least three different houses. So I wanted to get Adam on the show to talk about this because this is something that is rather unique when it comes to hauntings because usually they kind of stay in that one location, but some people believe that they can kind of follow you, and Adam is probably one of the best examples of that. So Adam, welcome to the show, mate. Great. Thank you, Kate. Cheers. It's really cool to have you on here because as I was uh, saying in the intro there, there's this kind of thought process that goes around haunted locations where it kind of just stays in that one area. But I have spoken to several people who believe like they are an individual kind of haunted individual, which is a a rather fascinating aspect when it comes to the world of the the paranormal. And I'm not kind of trying to say that you're a haunted person or or anything like that, but you have had this unusual activity kind of follow you through a couple of different houses. So do you want to take me back to that first house where this all really started to happen for you? Yeah, sure. So it would have been when I was about 24, I'd moved into a unit, quite a new unit, sort of in the Illawarra area. It was my first place out of living at home with my parents. So I was there, I was there for a good sort of year and a half before I met my now wife. So, you know, just as a bit of a background, I'm not, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I was raised as a Catholic. I, my work life revolved around sort of civil construction. You know, I grew up riding motorbikes and push bikes and surfing and stuff. So that was always the forefront of my thoughts. And I'd never really, you know, had a inkling to paranormal activities or anything like that. I, you know, I didn't like scary movies as a kid, so I've pretty much stayed away from them growing up as well. You know, I've never seen a paranormal activity movie or anything like that. I just find it's too unsettling and I kind of feel now I know why. So basically when I moved into that location in the Illawarra, it was a nice new unit. We're on the bottom floor. It all sort of started when I would, the first inkling I got would, I'd be sitting there watching telly, I'd be alone for example, and I would start to see basically shadows darting around the room in a sense. I would be watching TV and to my not even peripheral out on the far right it would be sort of right there from the kitchen to the hallway I'd notice a like a dash of black and I'd, and I'd look and I'd think wow that's that's strange you know and I, I would kind of just sort of say right well it might just be a shadow it might just be a reflection of a passing vehicle the lights hitting the wrong type of uh, structure and it would shoot out a shadow for example and I never really gave it too much thought from there you know I suppose because I wasn't that way thinking at all you know quite a positive person i deal with what i see you know things can be fixed nuts and bolts and you know that's that's my aspect on life basically that that other stuff was like that doesn't happen to me that's just on the movies and all of that jazz so i that continued to pretty much happen and i would sort of fob that off basically and i'm like wow this is it start it started to get a little bit worse at that point they would i'd see them quite often and I suppose then it would draw into, you know, I'd be, I'd be lying in bed and I would 
I would sense things. I would basically, I'd, so I'd shut my door when I would go to bed and then I'd wake up in the morning and my door would be open. And I'm like, I saw I shut that last night. You know, I'm going, what's going on here? And same deal, I'm like, hmm, tonight I'll try with my door semi-closed and see what it does in the morning. I'd kind of play with that in that space just as a bit of a, you know, side thing. I was quite busy with work. I was running my own business at that time. So I wasn't, like, I had real problems to deal with, you know. I didn't, to me, that was just like, that's a little bit weird, you know. It wasn't too much of a, I'd sit down and study it and worry about it or anything like that. It was more just, this is happening. So one particular night, I remember where it really sort of pointed itself out to me. I'd turn the tally off. I'd walked into, I'd got a drink at the kitchen brushed my teeth, walked into bed. And as I've turned off my, I've turned off the bathroom light and I've walked to my bedroom, which is only like a three, three step. It was an ensuite. So I'd, I'd step three steps out of the bathroom. And as I've turned around to sit on my bed to take my slippers off, I saw literally a, like a black swirling cloud. It was at head height. It was probably a foot away from the ceiling. And I've just gone, what is that? And next thing it just flew straight up my face. And it, it was so prevalent that I, I absolutely freaked out and I'm like, fuck, and I, I fully ducked it and, and jumped back onto the bed. It scared the absolute shit out of me, basically. And I was just like, oh my God, I cannot believe sort of that just happened. You know, and at that point, I was just like, right, this is kicking off. It's, it's actually happened. All those little shadows, all that, you know, that something is actually going on here. So I was just like, right, okay, just deal with it you know it's you've got you've got to get up at tram tomorrow you've got to go to work you've got shit going on at work that's that's your main focus don't ever worry about that basically so right that was my fourth my forecast from there that's that's what i've got to focus on don't deal with that too much because it's don't give it any sort of thoughts and it can't really bother me it wasn't too much of a scary thing if you can understand that like it was more it just happened it was a bit of a blowout and move on to the next day basically so that's pretty much what I did. I remember, this, bear in mind, okay, this is going back probably 15 years now. So these are very strong memories. I can, they're like photographic memories I have of these instances. They've completely stood out, stood out to me in that space. And I can vividly recollect these basically. So there would have been, it would have been a one to two week period after that. I was lying in bed. My I was still seeing these shadows darting around pretty much all through this unit. And then I, I remember lying in bed and I, I'm, I'm like, I can hear something. So I've, it sounded, I couldn't put my finger on it was, but I, I had my eyes closed. I was lying on my bed and I held my breath so I could actually hear what I could hear. And I legitimately heard someone breathing right next to me like they were sleeping on the pillow basically next to me. And I'm just like, oh my God, like, what, what the fuck, basically? I didn't know what to do. I just sort of, like, shrugged it off, basically. There's not much you can do. You know, you're living one out. That's happening. You can't see anything in a sense. So you're just like, oh, I've just got to deal with this and not think about it, you know? But that breath that I heard, it was, I, I remember holding my breath to hear what I could hear. And that's what so strongly came through. It was a... It was a dead set breath, would have been no more than, you know, 20, 30 centimetres from my ear. So it was quite a quite a loud breath, to say the least, you know. And that, you know, at this point, I, I knew something was obviously happening. I'm like, I didn't, I didn't know why, you know, I'm, I, I was raised Catholic. I'm not a religious person by any stretch, you know, but I, I always had that faith in, in God in a sense. I'm like, well, you know, God's got my back. I'll be okay. I'm doing the right thing in life. I'm not. I'm not a crumb as a person. So, worst thing, it's just a bit of shit going on. Maybe you know, it's just a bit of a crossover, whatever. And then, so I'm like, right, move on, move on. My my, basically, I'd met my missus at this point. She had moved in, and within probably a week or two, she's like, Are you, can you notice there's basically shadows darting around everywhere and. I'm like, oh, no, really, you know, I kind of, I didn't want to illuminate that to her, that that had been happening. I didn't want to freak her out. I didn't want her to leave. Like, this was, you know, I knew this was the one sort of thing. So I was just like, no, 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 it's, it's just the reflections. Like, 
But there, look, back to that topic, uh, there was no way they were reflections because the way this unit was set up, the, the only possible window that any type of light could have come through was at the back window at the end of a hallway. And outside of that unit room was basically a, a two metre nature strip. And then there was a, a brick wall because there was a mechanic next door. And it was the it was the a reset unit, so there was no way any type of light. There was no lights vehicles turning in to reflect any light, so there was no possible way it was a, a shadow of a bird in the sun or anything like that. These would happen mainly at night through the day as well, but sort of mainly at night, you know. And so yeah, shrugged that off. No, no, can't see nothing, babe. Like it's. It's just, it's just some type of reflection. That's all it could be, right? You know, this is the world we live in, basically. And then within about two weeks of her moving in, I had the so my I had the stereo and TV set up all in the one go. You had sort of two different remotes you'd have to turn on and off. And then would have been about midnight, whatever, one in the morning, the telly came on, and the and the radio came on but it came on at AM and it was full ball. And it just scared the shit out of us. We woke up, oh, what's going on here? We've ran out and sure enough, the, the, it's all going. And I'm like, oh no, you know, like it's, but this is getting a little bit stepped up in here. You had to actually physically press the on button on the TV, then the stereo. And then you had the AM, FM, you know, what was it, like AUX buttons that you'd have to press to go through each different setting on that telly to actually get it to play AM. So I'm like, mm, is it, was it something that's happened? Like, have we, have we done something to make it? Was there a timer? No time, it's nothing like that. I, I ran through that, like not with my missus, but like the next day she's at work, I got home and I'm like, right, let's just see what happens here. And I'm, I'm trying to actually replicate that. And the only way I could have done it was by turning each button on the remotes, clicking it to that AM, and then physically turning up that button, you know? So it was getting to that point where I'm just like, it's too obvious now, this is really annoying, you know, because I am i don't have time for that stuff to be worrying about that stuff. Like I've, 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 I have had my own business, it was, you know, it was a punish at that time. I was working long hours and I needed to worry about that. I couldn't worry about something that's, you know, not there in a sense. So, rightio, we, we move on, you know, a couple of weeks later, for example, at night, bang, we hear just smash, smash, smash. And we've gone out and there was probably at least four or five of our pictures that we had hanging up on the wall, all thrown around the room, basically. I'm like, hmm, could it have been just a loose hook, you know, but this is, we're talking multiple photos that come off the wall and smashed on the ground and they all landed meters from the hooks basically so i'm like well, and every time something would happen like this i would try to figure it out like why how did that happen could it be something that's you know doable by a, a large bang someone slammed the door and it's you know reverberated through to my unit for example nothing like that all the all the hooks were fine all the little cords on the back of the pictures were all solid it was just, there was no way to absolutely explain that through, you know, it was just bizarre. So it was, we were both on edge at that point. It was to that, almost to the point where she was like, this is almost getting too much. Yep, sure enough it was, you know, so it was good. At that time, we were, we were looking to buy another place. We are in a sort of a two bedroom unit at that time, quite new, but it was time to move on. We were talking about, you know, family coming up. so. Let's, let's basically start looking to move out. You know, you would, it would get to that point where it was almost like we had, we had our lifestyle going on, but we knew this was happening in the background that we didn't talk about too much. Her attitude was, we can't talk about it because it just draws energy to it. And I'm like, I completely agree. And let's not talk about that, you know, because it was, it was a little bit much, you know. It wouldn't scare me in a sense, like I'm, you know, not, what scares me is being, you know, caught out in a big set when I've just got dumped by a wave and then I've got another one coming and then I'm struggling for breath. That scares me, you know, that's... Or if I'm stuck out somewhere and I lose my way on a motorbike out in the bush and I'm a little bit lost, like, to me, that that's fear, you know, and this was sort of 
on the side stuff. I, I was trying not to let it worry me, but it was plain and obvious exactly what was going on at that place. It is rather interesting, the, the fact that you are so almost analytical about everything that's kind of going on and finding a, a reason or a place for why these things are happening. And I think that really speaks volume to your character because, you know, this is essentially most people's worst nightmare to live in a situation like that. And, you know, you've got your own business. You've got all the, the troubles and the worries and the, the stress that comes with, with doing that. And in hindsight, it almost seems like the the troubles of, of, you know, running your own business and the everyday life that goes with that was almost the the sanity point of everything going on because you could kind of anchor to that and go, I haven't got time for, for all this other stuff. I need to, to worry about this. I need to make this work. And now a quick word from our sponsor. Also, are you wanting more content? Why not become a Believe Plus member? You'll get access to exclusive podcasts and episodes that aren't available to the public. Not only that, you'll also get our regular feed without any ads. Head to believepod.com forward slash plus to sign up today for just $5 a month. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Look, you know, in, a, in, a, in another frame, if, you know, I was sitting at home unemployed watching scary movies and then this was happening that I, I think that would me personally that would be that tipping point I would be losing my mind freaking out going to a church but you're right that that was a good anchor point it allowed me to focus on what I considered a reality that was sort of it was there it was plain to see and I I could have that in the background and deal with it in my own way. See, I'm a, I'm a positive person, you know, like I I would try to see the good in any situation, you know, and to me at that time, I'd say things like, well, you know, it could be worse. You're not seeing stuff like that. To me, it would be super scary to see a ghost. Like that would be the ultimate for me. I'd be like, oh my God, that's, like, that's too much, you know what I mean? But like, it was all things that were happening that, kind of was out of my way or out of my sight thank god you know what i mean like if it was seeable you know it could be a whole different situation but yeah look i I, last thing i'd want to do is feel that i'm i've got this shit going on you know so i'm trying to figure out every little thing that why this could have happened just to just to basically debunk it you know i wanted to be able to debunk it saying yeah these things happen but like the reason it happens is because you've got a, a dodgy nail in your wall and it's and the, 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 the weight of the picture frame has just toppled it. And, and that's why that happens. Like, yeah, you don't have stuff going on at your house. It's just your dodgy hook or your, your picture's too heavy. Like, or, you know, there's a, you're leaving a window open, so you're getting a draft. That's why your door's opening. Like, but all that stuff, like I, like I said, mate, I, I wanted to go through everything. I, I live in a world where if something breaks, you fix it. There's a way to fix something. And, you know, this was just, in my eyes, to me, unexplainable completely as to how these things were happening especially here in that breath, seeing that black swirling bloody mass. Like that was, yeah, I, I have the most vivid picture of that whole situation there. Yeah, so you're right, it, it was a good anchor point for me. I was able to sort of definitely keep them two separate parts in, in my life, which was great. And, you know, I had a missus, I, you know, that's the last thing we, we need to be discussing where we're talking about buying a house, having kids and moving on and all that type of stuff. So. Yeah, that would just be an ultimate holdback. Like, and I think that's important. If this does happen, you know, to people, it's it's all about putting it into a bit of a perspective, right? Yeah, well, like that happens yet, yeah, but you've got your whole life going on around that you can focus on and not give it that energy. Or, look, hence why I said, man, I, I never watch scary movies. Like, not because I I was a scared kid. I just didn't like that stuff. It was unsettling. Like, I don't want to put that in my head the same time to because if I did I, I imagine if I was watching like I remember seeing the shorts of paranormal activity I'm like fuck watching that that's that looks horrible that's scary just watching just seeing it on telly it looks terrifying and you know when it's happening in real life it's not it doesn't seem as scary as it is because you you go well, what's going on you're trying to think about what's actually happened you know but I never my life never evolved around putting anything negative into it you know like watching that stuff or Ouija boards or anything like that, hanging out with people that were like that or anything like that, you know. We were, I was a surfing kid, I liked motorbikes, I liked BMX, I liked skateboarding, 
you know, born in 85 sort of thing. So I grew up in a pretty cool time, man, you know, with, with the, all that type of stuff. And, you know, your, your scary movies you'd watch back then were like Friday 13th or Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That paranormal stuff I stayed completely away from because just something inside me knew that, yeah, like, this stuff does happen and I think if you watch those types of movies and you that'll just completely wig yourself out if that actually does happen and sure enough like that happened to me and I'm thankful that I didn't watch that those movies because I I reckon it would have been so much worse for me mentally I wouldn't have been able to deal with it yeah and that's a that's a really good thing to kind of point out is that I am a I'm a massive believer that um paranormal influence like in popular culture is it plays such a huge role in how people perceive these things in their in their own lives and it's it's fascinating because you almost have this completely unadulted view of the of the paranormal and you're able to accept it on your terms and process it in in your own ways because you know you see these black swelling that black swelling cloud and that comes straight for your for your face and you know, most people would probably have a, a bit of a breakdown around that. And because you're not influenced by anything that you've, you know, seen in movies or popular culture or anything like that, you're actually able to separate what happened to how you can process it. And I find that truly fascinating because it is, it's something that I think would really terrify a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right, definitely. Like, yeah, it was just a way of, you know, I'm thankful for it now, like I said, mate, you know, going back if, if I was into that stuff. And I remember my best mate owned a video store, you know, and I'm like, you know, you want to watch this? I'm like, no chance, man. I'm not watching that stuff, you know, like, yeah, let's let's watch Die Hard again. <laughs> <laughs> you can never go wrong with Die Hard. No, nah, no, nah, that's exactly right. Yeah, so, but, you know, look, from that point, we, we were, we found a place, we were lucky, we got a... We got a nice little acreage we had to build. So there was a period there where we had to move into the in-laws place. And that was pretty placid in that sense. Nothing too bad happened there, but there was one, there was just this one particular incident there. I was, I'm like, right, I've must have just been something with that unit where we're free from that joint. Got a bit of a fresh start. Like I'm not really thinking about this paranormal stuff. It's more about, right, how are we going to build this house? What's going to be the best things to do? What builders are we going to engage? You know, what driveway am I going to put in and all that stuff? And so I remember I got rid of my business at that time. I'd, I'd gotten a pretty cruisy job, like a 7 till 3.30, just driving a truck, basically. And then I there was one day uh, I finished work. I was the only one home. We lived with the in-laws down in mind, so it was a smallish house. And I'd, our, where we would watch telly was in our room, so everything was set up in the room. And I've just gotten home, and I'm sitting there on the TV. I've had my shower. I've sat on the, the my bed. I've got the telly on. I've got my cat with me, and and I'm right next to the telly would be the door, literally like right there, sort of thing. And I've, I'd have the door. I'd keep it pretty well closed, but I'd leave it just cocked a bit so my cat can get in and out all good. And then the, basically the door went from a closed position pretty much all the way open, bang, in, in the one pull. I'm going, wow, what, what's going on? Same deal. What's going on here, you know? And I'm, and I'm like, I've looked to my right. I'm like, no, it's the cat. It's straight. It's just the cat. Bang, look to my right. And she's, she's there right next to me. I'm like, oh, no. You know, so I've gotten up and I've straight away I've walked around. I've checked the house. I'm like, right, I see that a window open. Basically, that's all it could have been was a window open, right? So I've checked every window in the house. They're all closed because they were, everyone had been working, so we closed everything up. I, I would only, I wouldn't even open my window, for example. You know, it would have been, say, winter. You know, I've got no fan going, for example, but the door just opened as in a way where someone had grabbed the handle and pulled it open. That's exactly how it looked. And I, same deal, I've gotten... I've tried to replicate this. I've tried, I went out and found the biggest bit of sheet I could find, whether it was like a, a sign, or I can't exactly remember what it was, but I, I grabbed something large and I'm, I've, I shut the door in the exact same way and I'm trying to fan it open and I could not get this door to half budge, basically. It was one of those older heavy doors 
I could not move that door for the life of me, basically with any type of wind flow. So I'm like, right, all I can put this down to is the same shit that was happening at that unit place. And I'm just like, great, you know, here we sort of go again. It wasn't just that place. It, it might be me, it might be following me, I don't know, but it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm, you know, like I grew up Catholic, so I'm not, I'm, I never go to church too, man, I should, probably should, <laughs> but it's one of those things I'm like, well, I was raised in the God sense, so I can always just say a little side note to God, whatever this is, man, just watch my back sort of thing. I'll keep solid in your light, but whatever that shit is, just make sure that I'm okay, please, you know? And so I put it down to that, right? Something's happened in this space as well. But, you know, I'm, I'm lucky because that was the only one thing that happened in that place. We're only there for, would have been only 18 months there, which was, a long 18 months, but it was okay because I wasn't too active in that space. Life was good. I had a pretty crazy job. Not too much activity happening. Not that I would let that really worry me in a sense, but, you know, there wasn't too much happening there. But it was, you know, unfortunately, it, it, it went stronger into the place we moved into. A lot more things kind of started to happen there again. And, yeah, it was, I suppose that's a whole nother, a whole nother uh, adventure there, really. But, you know, we once we had moved into that place it was it was a, it was a great sort of fresh start it was all exciting everything was sort of great there we yeah you know, we basically built our little dream home out in the middle of nowhere and it was it was lovely you know i've got kids coming my wife's pregnant you know and we're starting to we're starting to look forward away from all of that and you know tackling life's next sort of steps which is having kids and settling down career-wise and making sure we're okay there and you know same deal within about six months of living in that place all the picture frames went flying off the wall one night and my, my wife and I had gotten up and we just we had saw what happened and same deal they were they were scattered from like man meters away from where they were meant to be resting so I'm like well it could have fallen and it could have fallen funny and landed on the corner and bounced but it was just too far, you know, and it was on multiples. So it was like a, a right angle shaped wall. You had your, you had pictures on one side of the wall and then on the other side of the wall, not a cluttered house with pictures, like just your, a waterfall picture and then a couple of pictures of me and my wife in overseas, for example. And yeah, they had all just got launched. I'm just like, here we go again. You know, this is, it's, it's following me, you know, whatever, whatever's going on, it's just, consistently there you know does, sort of- does the anxiety start to to build up because your your life is it's changing obviously you know you you've gone from running your own business to you know starting a, a much more i wouldn't say sedate lifestyle because you're about to introduce kids into your life but it's 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 moving into a new kind of phase where you know mindsets completely change you know you mature as a person ideas change throughout your your life do you find you start to get a little bit more anxious or a little bit more uh, cautious about this activity now that it's kind of happening in this third location? Good question. Not To be honest, Kate, not really. Like, it, I, I wouldn't let it build onto me. Like, I, I, I always have the attitude of just shrug it off, man. You know, like, it's be brave. Don't worry about it. Like, I, I remember when I was a kid, when I'd be scared of the dark, for example, my dad would be like, don't worry about it. Like, just don't worry about it. Honestly, don't worry about it. Just think of happy things and you'll be right. Like, so I'm like, right, draw that in sort of thing. So I'm like, don't worry about it. It's happening, but like, it's not presenting itself. You're not getting some big, scary demon looking creature standing at the end of your bed, for example, you know? So it's just a couple of pictures flying off a wall. Like, that's nothing, man. You can handle that shit, you know? But so now, look, I don't, it, it definitely didn't, man, because I wanted to. I wanted to be stronger than whatever that was. I didn't want it to, I didn't want it, like, I don't even want to say I didn't want it to see me being scared. It was just that I didn't in myself want to let that stuff worry me because I wanted to be stronger and overcome that, you know? I, that was my attitude on it. I I try to be super positive in life. Everything's a blessing in a sense, you know? And um, I'm lucky to have that place and I'm lucky to have this missus, you know? And I'm lucky to have kids on the way and, no, I'm not going to let that overshadow the good things that are happening in my life, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's a, it's a super, super positive way to, 
approach these types of situations because I think you and I were probably fairly similar in those aspects because when you do find yourself in these types of situations, I think it's really, really easy for people to go, oh shit, this is like the scariest thing that I've, I've ever experienced rather than just kind of capturing it as a, a small moment in time and just let, let it happen and, and move on from it and just let yeah. it be. It is what it is type of thing. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. You know, it could, it could have always been worse. That was another way I would see it too. You know, I'm like, well, these things do happen. Like, it's not just me that experiences. Some people experience this a hell of a lot worse than what I am. So I'm like, well, in the grand scheme of things, I'm, I'm lucky then, really. Consider me lucky, you know, and that was, that was something that I adopted. And I, I you know, it's a good way to it's a good way to help process. Sorry about that plane. I'm under an airport. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. Um, it's it's for those for those listening. It's it's rather evident that that Adam is out in the bush areas of Australia. I think I, I love it. I can hear all of the all of Australiana in the background. Oh, <laughs> that's good. Yeah, no, I'm in a lovely spot here. But but yeah, look, you know that it, it's one of those things. I suppose that when these things do happen, you I hate to say it, but you gotta you just gotta. You've got to have your guts about you in a sense, you know. You have to sort of keep strong if you if you let it beat you. I can imagine the impact it would have on someone's life. It would it would affect their whole lives, basically. Your work, your your, your mainly it's mainly your mental state that would be the most at risk. And like I, I can't afford to have a, a, a bad mental state, you know. There's just you've got family and kids. You've got to be that provider. You've got to be that hard worker and that's what that's your your main focus in life you know so anything that's coming in externally that's trying to bother you yeah it just has to be sort of pushed to the side and that's that's how I'm going to deal with you that's how I'm going to deal with that and let's move on to the next day basically day by day sort of thing you know so yeah it was a, it was a, it was a good way to get through it but you know when, once the kids would come it, it sort of went what, what I'd find is that I'd, we'd, we'd got my daughter these pepper people toys one of them particularly was this pepper pig so and i'd wake up and i'd hear this stone going off and I'd be going hello hello and I'd, I'd walk in there and my daughter would sleep through a thunderstorm not a problem so i'm walking in there she's asleep still there's this little slip zone that's sitting there it's flipped open and it's going hello hello sort of thing and i'm like right so i'd i'd close that it would turn off and then i'd go back to bed basically and then the next day, I'm like, let's suss this one out. Why Why did that happen? So I'd, because I remember we'd pack her, we'd keep her room clean. She was only young, so she wouldn't have toys scattered everywhere, you know? So we'd pack her stuff up. We'd, and then that particular, that particular phone, you'd have to open it and then press the green button. And it would be like you're calling Peppa Pig. And she, it would go, and then she would answer, hello, hello. So that was how that particular toy would would access and you'd, you'd hear it. So the same deal, I'm like, this thing's opened up, something's pressed this button and it's doing its action, you know? And that, I'm like, this is another little thing just in my my world of weird stuff that goes on that, that happened in this in this room, you know? That happened multiple times with, with a few of her toys, she would get that. She'd have heaps of toys that were sort of button assisted or, you know, you'd, you'd wave your hand in, in front of it and it would activate. For example, there was this little parrot on a swing. You would press the button, it would record, you know, and you would hear that going off as well. It was it was a little bit, like, annoying that it was happening next to my daughter, I found. I'm like, I remember being angry, just going, piss off, mate, you know what I mean? Like, stay away from this area. Like, to do whatever but not here you know I remember getting really annoyed that that was going on in my daughter's room and then so a couple you know we, we, these things happen yep all good we move on and unfortunately my really close mate committed suicide that was a really shattering moment really sad time and I, I strongly remember that and that night I remember I got the call during the day and I went home that night and I remember my wife called me and she's like, she called my name and she called me to the kitchen. She's like, did you do this? And there was my, my daughter's bottles. Usually we'd have a rack that we'd clean her bottles out and throw them into. 
just because she would use them so often. We'd clean them, bang, throw them in the rack. And, and then she called me. That was the day I found out. She's like, did you do that? And I looked and they were all stacked absolutely perfectly. I, the most neatest stacking you'd ever seen as bottles in a rack, something out of a catalogue, you know? And I said, no, I didn't do that. You know, she's like, fuck, that's weird, mate. You know, I'm like, I didn't do that either, you know? I was like, well, I didn't do that, you know? And I said, it must have been my mate, you know? Like, it must have been him doing that. Because it was, it was just so bizarre that the bottles were stacked in that way. It was not us who did that. And I, I believe that whether I've got an easy crossover into or whatever, but, you know, I believe that was him that night stacking those. It was bloody weird. Why would you stack my bloody daughter's bottles in a rack? But maybe that was his way of communicating with me, in a sense. You know, that was, it's hard to reflect on that. Yeah, no, I and I can imagine the, the difficulty of it. And, you know, it's it's a nice thought to think of, you know, that's your mate coming back to just do one final thing for you before he before he continues on. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, as, as weird as it sounds, um, those bottles, but yeah, you, you know, I've tried to think what did that actually mean and what, what was the purpose of that and I don't really know. I can't put my finger on it, but... I think it was him just crossing over and saying hello. That's his way of us. Because, like I said, I'm I'm, a little, I'm trying to close off from all of this stuff from the previous stuff that had happened. I'm not actively looking for this. I'm not unless it's thrown itself in my face with a few smashed, you know, photo frames on the floor or a black mask that's right in my face, you know. And I'm trying to avoid any of those situations where I can be around that, you know. So maybe I was a lot more closed off and that was his way, you know, but then it, it you know, it kind of, kind of got to the point there where I, I started to feel like I was getting attacked in my dreams, weirdly enough, like I would have these, these dreams, like, so I would be lying there, I'd be a, sort of right on that edge of a sleep and I'd have someone yelling my ear super loud, wake up, you know, and I'm like, whoa, or like this giant loud bang, you know, and I'd wake up, I'd just wait and I said, did you hear that? She's like, hear what? And I'm like, oh, shit, it's just in my ear, you know? And then, then I'd get these, this is all in the last six months, not even, I'd, and I've never had these before. I'd get these dreams, these absolutely terrifying dreams. One of them, I was, I was I'd gotten up and I'd stood up and then something basically zapped me. It's like it's, it zapped me and then threw me up into the air and I was being electrocuted. I was like caught in this static bubble and I was just getting completely shocked and I was in, I remember I was in so much fear. I've never felt this fear in my life where I've done anything. Nothing has ever brought that close. It was, it, it felt like the most primal fear. It was like a, a fear of death in a sense. And I would moan and help. I'd be screaming and my wife would wake me. She's like, are you all right? I'm like, no, nah, no. Nah. I had a wild nightmare, you know, like, but it was so, it was, it was almost like it was a complete mirror of my existence in that place. I'd woken up out of that bed, walked out to get like a drink. I've got my torch as I'd always do. I'd always walk around with my torch at that place because it was dark and bang, it happened right then and there, you know, and then two weeks later I have another dream where I'm just lying in bed and then I just feel this sense come over me. I've got my covers over my head and I remember just wanting my mum. I was so, so scared, mate. I'd never felt anything like this fear. It was it was just yeah, mate, nothing in my life has ever brought me close to that. Nothing has even been close. So it was just this paralysing fear, you know, and same deal. I'm like, I need to wake the hell up out of this you know so I'm I'm screaming in my dream like help help and my wife would wake me you know and because she would I, she's like are you okay again and I said no 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 I had another one she's and then she's I said what do, what do I sound like when when I'm when you wake me what triggers you to wake me she's like you're moaning I can hear you sort of muttering something and I'm like I'm muttering help you know I'm yelling out to help like like, these aren't dreams. These are like, there's something else, you know. I can't explain what it is. It's not a, 
I hear the term sleep paralysis. I've had one of them once in an afternoon nap. It was a bizarre experience. I was lying there and my body just went like a two ton of bricks, you know. It was a really bizarre thing. But these these are next level, I, I don't even know if you'd call them a nightmare because I have nightmares where they're unsettling and scary, but never were these ones that I feel this fear of, it, like I can only imagine it's a fear of death. It's like I'm about to die in the dream or something and I, I pull myself out of that, you know. I don't know, I can't explain that. And I've only ever started to have these in the last couple of months. I've never had them before. I can remember scary dreams I've had. I don't even really want to talk about dreams. It sounds silly, but, but I can remember scary dreams I've had, you know, years ago when I'm 20. And they were same deal. See if it has picture dreams. I can remember them from the start to the finish. And in fact, they're scary, you know. But these are, I can't explain what these things are, you know. And I think is, is this another form of whatever has been bothering me? Is this its new way of of trying to mess with me? That's that's kind of how I assess this now. Yeah, that's a that's a really interesting way to to kind of look at it. It's it, it might be worth looking into like lucid dreaming and and things like that, Adam. Because this is this might sound a, a little bit woo, but it, it might also be worth looking into like astral projection. Because if you're if you're feeling so so powerful and so connected to these dreams, you know there may be something else to them. So those would be two kind of elements that I would I would look into if you if you haven't really heard about them before because I think that might shine a, a little bit of light on what you what you're doing and might even give you a better understanding on those types of situations. Yeah, 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 yeah. I haven't looked into that. I, I don't really do social media much. I, I've heard of it all, astral projection and, and lucid dreaming, but you know I. Yeah, I've, it's just something I don't really look into. I probably should. It might give me a bit of an insight as to what may be going on. But yeah, yeah, like it's, yeah, it's, it's really weird. It's a, it's a horrible feeling. Um, you know, I, I've some some nights I have these wicked little dreams where I'm about to fall asleep, and I, it's like I'm in another world. Like I, I'll be watching someone at a fireplace. It's almost like I'm a ghost. <laughs> in someone else's I'm like, where am I going to end up now? Bang! I'm like, wow, this is this is insane. I'm, you know, watching a watching a 19, 19th century couple sitting around a fire here with a rocking chair, you know. And so yeah, I I have these distinguished little dreams these days, which I'd never had before. You know, usually that'd be a just weird dream, or whatever. But now I'm taking so much more notice of my my process from lying down, closing my eyes, then where it sort of goes to from there. But these these really bad dreams that I get that I was explaining, they'll happen at all stages through the night. Sometimes they'll be at, I'll wake up, it's 1 a.m. Other times it's like 10 o'clock at night and I just fall asleep. Other times it's, you know, three. Other times it's right before I wake up. So, you know, I don't know what the stages of that mean, but all I know is that they are next level fear. It's interesting. Have you ever and and you know this this may sound a bit bit out there, but have you ever considered doing like journaling about like what your dreams are and and things like that? Yeah, I, I've I did start, but I didn't get too sort of far with it. I I've got two notes here that I just was hopeless with keeping some of three actually. I'll I'll just share one. Don't. So 23rd of the 5th, 23, dark pluming cloud like a thick thunderstorm, just random. So these are taken right as I've woken up, I remember. And then the next one, the 24th of the 5th, dreamed of a leech sucking on my arm, leaving a black hole and would keep coming back, leave small black crater like scab on the bite. Six of the six, dream of driving my ute with machine on the back. Blinkers were going hazards and a three-way blinker while turning would have to turn the hazards off or a blinker stick. Just really weird sort of notes that I would start taking down, but I just, like, stopped. I I didn't have the time. Like, it's, you know, man, like, it was one of those things where I'm like, you know, maybe you're just reading into it too much, bro. Like, it's just dreams. Don't worry about that. (laughs) (laughs) That'll work. 
<laughs> no, I totally get it. I totally get it. And I don't know, you, you're probably a bit like me that like when you start talking about dreams, you probably think like, yeah, people think this is crazy talk. You know, it's it's a bloody dream, mate. Move on. It's yeah. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah, exactly right. I don't want to give too much weight to that because we all dream, you know, and it might seem like I'm just trying to fob something up out of nothing in that sense, you know. But, yeah, it's just I feel that there is a lead-in from what's happened previously to, to these to these recent dreams. I've probably had about four of them now. I only had one a couple of, I would have been only about two weeks ago where I, I'd sense it coming. I was back at my, the dream was like back at my in-law's place where we had had that door o- opening experience and I could, it's almost like it's darkness. I would see the darkness and then the fear would come. And I remember lying on the couch in the dream and I'm, I'm looking at the front door and I'm like, it's out there. It's whatever, whatever that fear is, it's there. And I remember the fear, it's like a wave would come and then I'm like, wake up, wake up, wake up, you know, wake up sort of thing. And I'd wake up basically at that point, more or less. So yeah, it was, yeah, trying not to give too much to that, but something's definitely a little bit up there. I'll, I'll keep, you know, keep monitoring in a sense, but there's not much I can do about it. You know, I've just got to deal with it and move on and continue life as, as planned, you know? Yeah, yeah, and that's exactly it, you know. It's, your no one's lives should ever stop for the, <laughs> essentially for anything, you know, for the paranormal, for any odd encounters that that happen and you know adam i think you're a really great example of that you know you you've tied your your life down you you had goals you had dreams and you didn't really let any of this kind of get in the way you know it's you had things that you could anchor to to kind of keep yourself you know on the straight and narrow because people have these encounters and they turn it turns their lives completely upside down and you know like you said earlier it it can really affect a lot of people's mental health because things are happening that shouldn't be happening that don't make sense and i i feel like a lot of people would genuinely genuinely feel like you know they're they're losing their mind or something else like that and the the fact that you're you're able to kind of just cement yourself and really steady yourself i think it's a real testament to you and you know your your family yeah, no, thank you. Thank you very much, mate. Yeah, it's just, you're right. You've got to, you've got to focus on what's important, not sort of what's not important, you know, and that's not important. It happens, but it's just like you kick your toe, you don't dwell on it, you know, you, you keep walking, you, you cut yourself, you put a Band-Aid on and you keep doing what you're doing. It's, it's the same philosophy I put to this, you know. It happens, you, life still has to basically go forward and that's what you do. You, you just have to basically keep pushing on, mate, you know. Most definitely. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Believe Paranormal and UFO podcast. If you have had an encounter and you would like to share it, please get in touch with me. My email address is believepod at gmail.com. Finally, don't forget to follow us on all our social media outlets and be sure to join our Discord server to talk to other listeners of the show. You'll find all these links in our show notes. Thank you.